Okay, so, um, hey. Welcome back. Whoops. Oh my goodness. Destroying everything. Totally out of control. Oh my god. Okay, well, <laughs> aside from that bit of excitement, hello, welcome back. Um, where we uh, left off last time, we were working on this mill spec here, and it started off really, uh, actually, very poorly. And um, so, what we're going to do, oh, my glasses seem to have gotten a little bit of something in them. They're not working very well. All right, no problem. We'll exercise them so they do. There we go, perfect, fixed. Um, so where we uh, where we left off, we were getting really, really weak light out of this, and I said, well, you know, maybe I should go ahead and change the uh, the seal in the cap, and you know, do the do the normal stuff that you're supposed to do, and probably blow out uh, some of the crud that may have gotten jammed up in this in this brand new generator here. So. Um, First things first is the cap gasket, and I was just going to do this off uh, off camera because you know you guys see me change these things like a hundred times, but I wanted to show you um, a common problem that people run into. So we're just going to go ahead and unloosen the screw, pull this off here, and then we're going to unloosen the cap. Everything comes off fine, and then you're like. Hey, I can't get this off. How do we get this off without screwing it up? And I've seen people talk about all kinds of crazy ways to get this off of here. And the fact is, is that you've got probably the best mechanical advantage built into this right here already. And that is quite simply the threads on the inside of this cap when it's screwed in, is basically gonna work like a screw jack to pull this out. You can put a tremendous amount of force on this. So, if you find yourself in a situation where you can't get this out and it's stuck, just go ahead, screw the cap back on, uh, put your screw back in. Um, you don't even, I mean, you can put it in there a little bit tight. I mean, obviously you wanna have some threads for uh, for purchase but probably just screwing down my hand until it stops and then use the the uh, the screw action of this to break that loose and it'll come right off so you don't need to use uh, any kind of heat or anything like that if you don't want to if it's really really stuck and it doesn't want to come off uh, you can put a pair of pliers on this because that also will help it apply a lot of uh, a lot of force to this and then uh, always use some sort of something around the cap so you don't mar it up this one's pretty well beat up i should actually throw that away so it all right over <laughs> anyway so I don't screw up something like I did one of the last times I used it. So well, I'll have to just cut a new piece. So then uh, since you just hopefully did that in their finger tight, it'll come off really easy and then you can go from there. So now what you guys get to do is you get to watch me do yet another cap gasket because that's what we do on this channel is that we replace cap gaskets by the thousands. Um, so we're gonna set this up here, do our normal bit um, I'm gonna get my replacement gaskets which are actually sitting right out here fastnets number twos these work really good they fit excellent and uh, yeah they work really good so basically we're just gonna torch this thing out of here I'd say that's looking pretty good. When it's on fire, you've done a good job. And then uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and let it continue to kind of burn, <coughs> choking on the fumes, and then throw it straight into the water. <coughs> Do not recommend breathing that. <coughs> Man. <coughs> uh, definitely a lot of sulfur in that rubber. It's like the uh, it's like the worst part of uh, <laughs> Fourth of July. I do I do like the smell of of sulfur, but wow, that is really that's pretty offensive. Okay, so we're gonna go through this just lickety split. You can see how quickly all that has uh, all come out. It's all very very loose. Um, I'm just gonna kind of probably just rinse it off and and the water here. Of course, throw it in the bottom because I want to make things difficult. And, um, yeah, so, whew, man, it's like still stuck in my nose. It's pretty awful. These, uh, 
these dental tools are fantastic for this kind of stuff. I really love them. And usually you can pick up old ones at uh, at some of these antique shows for just just a, like a dollar or two a piece. And they were probably a whole lot more than that when they were new, but um, nonetheless. So that's that completely out. Pop a new seal in here. Then we're gonna go ahead and um, pump this up and we're gonna see what we can do to uh, fix our, our low light problem because we are looking on taking a trip and I wanna take some lanterns along with. I might wanna take this one just because it's kinda new and fun and uh, need to get it running. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, sometimes you need to kind of convince these a little bit. Actually, I'm going to use the secret weapon, which is this, uh, the paint can opener. This is actually a, a tool that, uh, Bassnets, uh, recommends to use to put their, uh, their, uh, gaskets in because it has that little curved edge in there. You can kind of like, kind of push down and pry back and get it to, uh, go in like it's supposed to. And it actually works really, really good. Okay, great. That is that all done. So we'll screw that back down on there tight. Then we will screw our other screw back on here and we will be in business. And also, I mean, you basically screw it down till it stops, which is kind of there. It's never going to go all the way tight. It's not supposed to, because uh, that's just how they work, right? So um, let's kind of see what we got here now. I think the last time, and I think what I have to do is I have to remove all of the quadrant glass to give myself some access. Just kind of stack that up over here. So when we were running it last time, it was doing okay. It had a little bit of a leak down at the bottom here. And uh, I think I'm gonna use this because the other wrench didn't fit quite right. Anyway, so we're gonna take this off and um, we're gonna get the gas tip out of it because the gas tip got clogged, which is kind of odd because it's a, a brand new, um, a brand new generator that we put in there. So we're gonna take this out of there, sort of. Trying not to um, wreck the mantle that way we just put in there, although I don't know how all that's gonna work. There we go, okay, we're good. Um, I'm gonna use the, um, the little pricker tool to clean the orifice out so that's stored in the side here and it just kind of pivots out like that and then uh, we try to we hope we can find a little tiny hole here which there we go so that's clean pivot this back in so it does not get damaged we may actually need that more than once, so we'll probably leave that out. And now what I'm gonna do is, um, hmm, I lost my little tiny wrench. God only knows on this desk here where it could have got to, but um, hmm. I thought I thought I had it around here somewhere, but I guess it's kind of gone AWOL. It's not up on, oh, here it is, Doop. Right in front of me. Okay, little tiny wrench for little tiny uh, gas tip. In case anyone's wondering, this is a five thirty second wrench here. We're gonna get this off. So the idea here is I'm going to uh, remove this gas tip. I'm going to hook the generator back up, and I'm going to run a fair amount of gas, just blow it out through there and uh, try to clean out whatever might be hanging up in there. So again, I'm going to try to do this without wrecking the mantle. But um, yeah, we'll just kick it over here over to the side like this. 
and um, yeah, we'll do that. Kind of do this, tighten it down, and now we pump. So make sure the valve's off. Okay, that's probably good enough. We're gonna capture this fuel in something. I've got I've got the gas tip from the other generator over here. This is the one that was on it that was plugged. I put a little bit of carb cleaner in it, and it seems to have uh, got a little bit of flow through it. I can feel air moving, but that's about it. So what I'm gonna do so I don't get the tips mixed, and honestly, it probably doesn't matter, but I know that this is this one went with this, so I might as well try to keep everything straight as possible. Um, so we'll set this back up here where I can get another dose of carb cleaner. I can take this, hopefully catch the fuel as it launches out of here, maybe. Come on. There we go. Maybe that'll work. We'll see. Okay, so that's that's just fuel dripping everywhere. You can't really see it from your angle there, so let me turn you around a little bit. Kind of try to mop up some of this fuel because otherwise it's just gonna be a bit of a mess. But if you watch right here, that fuel is gonna come shooting out of there. So it's just kind of dripping, which is fine. Um, I'm going to flame this stuff off so uh, we don't have to worry about it too much. Give that a minute to kind of burn off. So um, I've got good fuel flow through the generator, so that part's good. There's good airflow through there, so that part's good. Um, what we need to do is I think just kind of, okay, that's enough, uh, is to put the generator tip back on and, and see what happens. Um, really taking this here and, and running running fuel out of it, I wish I had like a little, hey, maybe a little test tube, this would be great. So um, if I can just get this off, I had carb cleaner here before and I don't think it got along very well with the vinyl. Um, but yeah, I can do this and then I can run a lot of fuel out through it. So then I don't, <laughs> I won't catch myself on fire. Always, always a good thing. So we'll just open it all the way up. Cause I just want to kind of rinse everything out of there and that's doing pretty good. A lot of, a lot of fuel flow. That's the idea. Looking pretty good. It actually started off a little bit cloudy and then got a little bit more clear. Okay. So um, we can pour that back in. We'll just filter it and pour it back in. So um, really the deal here will be to get this off or get it loosened again. Okay. And then we're going to reinstall our gas tip, like so. And when threading dissimilar metals, I usually, um, or trying to screw them back in, I usually go backwards first until I feel it drop into the thread. And especially with soft metals like this. And once I feel it drop into the thread, then I know I'm going to be right in there without cross-threading it. Because uh, these, will, I mean, brass into aluminum will, will definitely cross-thread pretty easy. Well, anything into aluminum doesn't take much to uh, mess it up. So that's pretty tight. I'm going to get this on here. Perfect, good. Everything's going according to plan so far. Kind of trying to see if this is a little bit 
out of line here. This the generator's maybe a little bit bent, so we're gonna give it a little tweak so it's a little straighter. It had a little bit of a bow to it, which that also could have been contributing to our uh, uh, difficulty in, in sealing with the ferrule down here. So hopefully this will um, make it sit like it's supposed to. So, now, fire, fuel, air. Let's see what happens. Just waiting for the fuel to spit. I don't want to open it up too much because um, we'll get that liquid fuel problem. And it takes a while to kind of get this thing to preheat, so we're just going to kind of be patient with it here, although this is taking a little longer than I would want it to. This should start getting it the liquid fuel. Yep, there's the uh, there's the liquid fuel I was talking about. But I guess we'll just kind of keep on with that. Still really, really yellow. Well, let's see what happens when we give it some more air. Oh, we get more fire. <laughs> it's all right. She's going to come along. Now, these things, there we go. They really want to get hot in here so they can uh, get that fuel vaporized in that generator. So we're going to add the glass back in. You can see as it's getting some more heat in it, it's running better. Until it doesn't. Well, let's, uh, let's put the lid on it here too. We'll really work at retaining some heat. There we go. Okay, I got this all the way open. And it's doing what um, I've traditionally seen. Yeah, it's gonna, generator's gotta catch up a little bit, but we're gonna keep pumping here. So what I was trying to say is what it's doing is what I've seen the, uh, the peerless mantles do. And this was a peerless that I put on here. And these have a tendency to burn real orange when they start. And uh, this one is uh, pretty much doing the same thing. Uh, so it probably looks pretty good in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in what you're seeing out there in the, in the, on the camera. But maybe if I take this a little closer and we do this, um, maybe you can see that there's some orange spots. We'll see if I can do some video editing to make that stuff kind of show up. Uh, and there's also some really bright white spots. So the deal is, is that as this burns, those orangey spots go away. And then it, uh, then it works just fine. But, um, yeah, so uh, this thing is doing exactly what it needs to do. It's burning hot and it's burning strong and, uh, you may have thought when we first started this and seeing that very, very anemic looking flame, you're like, dude, this is never going to work. Well, <laughs> mill specs are a little different, you know, they operate a little bit differently because of that great big giant generator that sits really quite a ways away from the, um, from the heat source of the mantle. And uh, for that reason, you have to have a certain amount of, um, get this pack back down in there. You have to get a certain amount of heat in there and trying to run these things without the globe on there, you can, uh, it, it, it'll take a lot longer for it to, uh, to heat up. So, um, there we go. That's all cranked down, but yeah, that's it. That's, uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, we can probably even put some more pressure in it, but it feels, feels pretty good, but we can put more in here. I think I need to lubricate the, uh, the pump 
washer uh, or the pump leather with a bit of neat's foot oil, which will help it work a little bit better. But uh, yeah, so this is the uh, the roar of the mill spec lantern. They're really efficient on fuel. They have a very small orifice. They'll run for a very long time, but uh, they are loud. Uh, you definitely cannot sneak up on anyone with one of these around. So, uh, but uh, but there you go. So that's it. She's all running just as good as you'd possibly want it to. And uh, even though it looked like it wasn't going to do anything, no, nope, she certainly did, and uh, is, is looking good. And yeah, yeah, a really nice one. Probably not one I'm going to take on the trip just because it's so loud. Um, yeah, we. Uh, I took the uh, on our previous trip. I took a uh, a two thirty six and a, in the two thirty seven, which are the big single mantles. They're actually sitting right behind me, right there. Very bright, five hundred candle power, but unfortunately hard to have a conversation when it's just roaring away like this. So anyway, uh, probably won't be taking that one. But that is it for this one. So I hope you enjoyed it. We got the thing fixed and she's running and looking really good. So until next time, keep them lit.